Following up on my charm quirks are nonsense video, our bottom quirks are nonsense. And if you're not familiar with the quirk model, you have six quirks, and the second heaviest is the bottom quirk, which is sometimes called a beauty quirk, uh, and some guys prefer to be known as beauty quirk specialists rather than bottom specialists. So, the bottom quirk is thought to be part of some of the heavier mesons, the B mesons, and also the bottomonium or upsilon series mesons. It's also considered to be part of the bottom baryons, which are the heaviest of the baryons. And so, it's considered to be part of quite a few resonances in total. And the bottomonium tells you that they're already having to use onium theory in order to extend the quark model, just like they did with charm quarks, where they have charmonium resonances. Now, there are two different estimated mass ranges. One is about 4,180 MeV per C squared, and one's about 4,650 MeV per C squared. And I won't go into particulars, except that the bottom quark actually covers a fairly wide range of masses. In onium theory, it goes from about 2,500 up to 6,500. Plus, you can add additional mass in a central particle that's being orbited. So it's quite a wide range. In reality, the bottom quark is a donium resonance. It's two D mesons or the equivalent, or it contains four kaons. Sometimes there'll be two kaons in an orbit and then two kaons forming a, don a D meson particle around it. But in general, I think of them as donium resonances. And now each of the D mesons contains two kaons, and each kaon contains two pions. And the, so the kaons, if you have two pions orbiting a central electron, that's seven. So seven plus seven is 14. 14 plus 14 gives you 28 but the kaons can be orbiting a central electron, giving you 15. And so the number of electrons in a typical donium orbit is 28 to 30. But sometimes the central electron's not relativistic, so you can have between 27 to 30 relativistic electrons. And this gives you a range of additional mass energy using the onium model where you have steps of 35 MeV per C squared as the quantization of all the resonances, which is known. It's known that it's quantized as a fraction of the mass of the electron times the fine, or divided by the fine structure constant. So you end up with 27 times 35 is 945 MeV per C squared on the low energy range of a donium orbit. And these orbits are typically found in the bottom baryons. And then you have 29 times 70 equals 2,030 MeV per C squared, or 30 times 70 is 2,100 MeV per C squared. And those orbits are typically found in the, the B mesons and also the bottomonium resonances. So adding 2,000 MeV plus in an orbit is a substantial increase in mass. And part of the reason why it was disconnected from the charm baryons and from the kaon resonances. But one of the interesting things is that there are lower energy, the 945 or 980 MeV orbit mesons but they're miscategorized because they're not recognized as being these 
to our 4K on structures, 4K on orbits. And that's one of the reasons why the Onium model wasn't really understood immediately is because there's two different ranges, an upper and a lower range. And the same thing happened with the charm baryons, the charm or charm quarks. The charm baryons are lower energy orbits while the charm mesons are higher energy orbits. And so the some of the charm mesons are miscategorized as being something else, which is why there's a whole bunch of particles that don't fit the standard model. So we can look at estimating the mass estimates. Um, and if you take a neutral D meson and a charged D meson and 945 MeV, you get 4,680 MeV per C squared. And if you take two charm quarks in an onium resonance with 2,100 MeV per C squared, you get 4,650. So you end up with matching the mass estimate if you consider that bottom quarks are a form of charmonium. And of course, charmonium is k-onium, so it's not really a separate particle. So all along bottom quark theory has just been an onium theory extension and it's not really been a separate fundamental particle. Now to get the lower mass estimate we can look at an omega and a d and then with the omega, which is two light k so you can add 490 MeV, which essentially gives you the energy, the mass energy of the charm quark. And then add your orbital energy and you get 4187. Or even more simply, you can get an omega and a charm plus 2100 MeV and you get 4157, uh, 4158. So you end up with estimates in that range by looking at, again, two charm quarks, essentially. Uh, two charm quarks equals a bottom quark. So when I zoom my papers on this, B mesons are donium, and here's a chart showing different models where I've estimated the mass generally to 0.1% relative accuracy. And then the bottomonium mesons are bonium, they're 2B mesons, or they're 4D mesons in orbit or in combination. And so that gives you all of these mass estimates, once again, almost entirely to 0.1% relative using these models. And then the bottom baryons can be estimated the same way, except they have two D mesons in orbit or four K ions in orbit around a proton or a lighter baryon like the sigma chi omega. So you end up with all the, the bottom baryons falling out of the onium theory in a very simple way and once again very high accuracy estimates. In addition to the bottom baryons the double charm baryons and the exotic baryons also fit immediately into the onium theory. Um, you don't need to have a special new theory to account for the exotic baryons. So it was onium theory all along. The bottom quark is an onium resonance by itself. It, it never was a fundamental particle. And so using bottom quarks in the theory is nonsense. Along with charm quarks. And I'll do a video on top quarks which don't actually do anything so they no reason for them to be in the elementary particle table to begin with. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you do please like it share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for my next ones, 
And if you'd like to learn more, I'm going to put links to my papers and previous videos on the su subject, as well as you can purchase my book, Goodbye Quarks the Onion Theory, where I step through the logic that led me to developing the Onion Theory as an alternative to quark theory. And if you buy my book, that you'll learn a lot, and I will. it'll also help me in my retirement, which I appreciate. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, as always. So thanks for watching.